Hello, my name is Joe Hildreth and welcome to episode 10 of CNC for the Home Hobbyist. In this episode I'll be delving a little deeper into the parallel port. I'll discuss the physical pins on the port, how the port is used with Linux CNC, and how to add additional ports to the computer. Keep in mind that I'm neither a machinist, teacher, nor an engineer. I'm a home hobbyist wishing to share my experience with CNC machines for the home shop. It is my hope that over time, as videos are released, the hobbyists can leverage them in their attempt to make their own CNC machine. Additionally, I hope to flatten the learning curve and help people avoid some of the more confusing parts along the way. With that out of the way, let's get started. The parallel port can be identified by a female DB25 connector on the back of the machine. Most are a pink color, but this is not mandatory. The connector will have two rows of sockets on the connector, with 13 in one row and 12 in the other. In the previous tutorial, we learned that the parallel port has evolved over the years, with nearly all hardware created from the year 2000 on supporting both EPP and ECP protocols and are bidirectional. Linux CNC can use either of these ports. The parallel port is divided into three registers. These are shown by the colored boxes on the graphic. The first, represented by the red color, is called the data register. The second, or green colored, is the status register, and finally the control register, denoted by the yellow color. The arrows on the graphics depict whether the pin is an input or bidirectional. Here you see that the status register, or green pins, can only receive data, while the data and control registers can both receive and send data. It's worth noting that the bidirectional registers when used with Linux CNC can only be set up either as inputs or output, but, cannot, you know, but both cannot be used at the same time. If most of that seemed like mumble jumbo, don't worry. Understanding the last bit I talked about, it's not really mandatory to use Linux CNC. I gave this information only because I think it's helpful to know tidbits like this, I believe, help provide a richer understanding of the hardware and the software that we're trying to use. Linux CNC uses the parallel port through real-time software called the Hardware Abstraction Layer, or HAL for short. The parallel port can be set up in one of three different operating modes. It can be used for OUT, IN, or X mode. Depending on the mode selected, you will be provided with differing numbers of inputs and output pins. When the port is used as an out mode, the port will be configured to provide 12 output and 5 input pins. When the port is used in in mode, the port will be configured to provide 4 output and 13 input pins. And finally, if the port is used in X mode, it will be configured to provide 8 output and 9 input pins. It should be noted that X mode uses 4 pins from the control register to provide some of the inputs. However, some port hardware cannot be used in this manner and depends on the circuitry that makes up the control register. If the pins are open collector, then they can be used in this manner. If they're not, the port can be damaged when using the control registers for inputs. By default, using the step comp utility to configure your ports, you will only be given the option for in or out modes. Mode X is only available to you by coding it directly in the HAL configuration file. Since most beginning users will use the StepConf utility to configure their hardware, there's no need to worry about X mode or damaging your parallel port. If a single parallel port does not provide the number of input and output pins that you need for your application, then have no fear. Additional ports can easily be added to the controller computer by the use of add-on parallel port boards. These were mentioned in the previous tutorial. Linux CNC can support up to 8 parallel ports providing a total of 136 pins for input and output. That's quite a lot of I.O. and would take care of a large majority of applications for the controller. But I must be honest with you, you may or may not be able to install that many ports. The number of ports you'll be able to install on the machine will be dictated by the number of expansion slots available on the motherboard. Uh, on the computer that you're using and how many ports are available in the expansion cards that you purchase. I also feel obligated to say that if you find that you need a large number of I.O. pins for your project, there are better solutions to get them. 
A Mesa I.O. card, for example, can provide 72 or more I.O. pins and have a throughput much, much faster than is capable on a parallel port. Having said that, most users will only need one or two ports for their application and maybe, in very rare instances, three ports. Adding additional ports to the computer was covered in the last episode, number 9, titled Linux CNC I.O. Options. If you have any problems with this, let me know and I'll do what I can to help you. I'll also show you how this is done in the practical demonstration in this episode. Once you have your ports installed, we need to determine what resources the ports are using on the computer. We have to find this information so that we can tell Linux CNC where they are and how we wish to use the ports. The information we need to find is either enumerated port number that the operating system has selected for it or the base address of the port itself. These are easy enough to find and I'll show you how in the practical demonstration. It's important to note that the resources used by the ports are only valid for the current installation of the operating system and the expansion slot that they're installed in. What I mean by this if you change the slot in which a port is installed or reinstall the operating system, the enumerated port number or the base address might change. So it's always important to check these any time a major change is made to the system to see that the data is still valid. Getting the I.O. pins of the parallel port extended to the outside world will generally require an IEEE 1284DB25 to DB25 cable. The ends of the cable, whether male to male or male to female, will depend on the type of external hardware you intend to connect the port to. One device commonly used is called a breakout board, or BOB for short, and will simply bring the pins of the port out to allow you to wire to them. These boards provide buffering and signal pull-up capabilities to prevent damage to the parallel port. Some of these are quite simple boards supplying only connections to the port I.O. pins while other, while other boards provide additional functionality like onboard 5 volt DC power source, external enabling, enabling, along with other things. Breakout boards are typically used when you have separate motor driving hardware for stepper or server motors. An example of a breakout board can be found with CNC for PCs C10 bidirectional parallel port breakout board. Other types of hardware that you connect to the parallel port are more integrated, meaning that they have stepper or servo drivers connected to them already. These units typically would include three or four motor drivers and pass a few of the I.O. pins to the end user to add limit switches, VFD, pulse width modulated spindles, and stuff like that. An example of such a device is Gecko's popular G540 multi-axis step motor drive. The hardware that you end up connecting to the parallel port or ports really depends on what you're trying to accomplish. I would go out on a limb and suggest that the vast majority of home hobbyist CNCers will use stepper motor setup of some type using either an integrated stepper driver like the Gecko 540 or we use separate drivers driven by a breakout board like the CNC 4PC C10 board. Because of this assumption, I'll be moving in that direction initially in these tutorials. Now enough of that. Let's take a look at the practical demonstration of adding new parallel ports to the computer. Okay, this is the machine that uh, we're going to add a parallel port to. This is an HP Compact Pro 6000. Uh, it's just an old desktop machine. And uh, currently it has one um, parallel port in it. And I'll turn this around. Hopefully I can keep it in frame. And we can see here that uh, we have one parallel port. And if you look at that, it kind of looks like that's... Uh, an add-on card because it is taking up one of the slots. But I'll open up the machine and uh, we'll see that it's actually just a, a card. I mean just a, uh, um, a part of the onboard uh, parallel port. So let me, uh, let me get that ready and I'll come back. Okay so here we can see the back side of the parallel port and it's got a cable that runs off to the motherboard. Now recall in the uh, previous tutorial I said that uh, you know, you have to look at the slots that are available in the motherboard uh, to see what's uh, available. And if we look in this one here, hopefully, let me see if I can get a little centered up there on the screen. We can see here that there's a, a PCI slot, 
There are two PCIe slots. This one happens to have a modem stuffed into one, but there's still another PCIe slot. And then here's another PCIe slot, but you notice it's quite a bit uh, longer. So that's like a PCIe times 16 or by 16. And the uh, PCIe slots are real easy to recognize. You know, they have a very short um, row of pins here, and then there's a bridge, and then more pins. It could be short, it could be half this long, it could be this long or whatever. And the PCI bus, uh, they're typically white, although I have seen other colors, has a long row of pens and then a bridge and then a short row of pens. And then the, uh, the other type, if you have a quite a bit older machine, is, um, is the uh, ISA slot. And it's uh, generally pretty long and I think there's a bridge about right in the middle, if I remember right. So the card that I'm going to add, I forget, uh, excuse me, I forget the uh, brand of this card. This is a PCI um, single parallel port and it supports SPP. Remember that's a uh, you know, regular single parallel port, uh, EPP and ECP. Okay. So this is the uh, card we're going to use, and I'm going to put it over here in this um, PCI slot. And hopefully, I can get this in frame and not uh, get my hands in the way too much. So basically, this is just going to come over here. We're just going to line the, the pins up to the port and you see how there how I have them lined up and we're just going to push them straight down and that's that that's all it takes to uh, install the hardware whether if it's a PCI PCIe or um, or an old ISA card they all install the same you just uh, open the box up uh, you want to make sure that you you ground on the grab the box first to uh, um, remove any Static discharge, or, you know, to, to discharge any static that you might have on your body. Just, you know, just grab any part of the metal case uh, before you uh, install the card. The cards are usually kept in a anastatic bag, which is just some sort of gray plastic bag. And uh, just keep them in there until you're ready to install. And if you pull one out, just be sure to put it back in the bag. So uh, the next thing we're going to do is we're going to see what resources um, this parallel port is going to use. So I'm going to do a screen cast for that using GTK record my desktop and hopefully that'll go pretty smooth. Sometimes uh, it doesn't capture all the uh, uh, audio for whatever reason. So uh, we're going to come into that next. Okay guys and ladies, um, now that we have the parallel port installed, we need to find the resources that the computer's assigned to it so that we can use it and whether or not if the, um, if the uh, parallel port was enumerated. When uh, telling Linux CNC about your parallel ports, there are two ways to describe them. You can either describe them by the enumerated number that they've been assigned, or you can use what's called the base address. Okay. To find the enumerated number, if it exists, what we're going to do is we're going to do a file listing. Right. So I've opened up the terminal by clicking on the uh, little terminal icon down here. We're going to do a file listing, so ls means list, and what we want to do is list um, the device ID or the device name that uh, the computer has created, and um, there are actually two here that we can look at. We can look at uh, pair port, right, star, right, and we see that there's two parallel ports. There's parallel port 0 and parallel port 1, so the enumerated, what that means is that if we were to add another one, it would come up as dev slash pair port two, right? So the first parallel port, which is the one that's on board, it most will most likely always be the one that's on board, uh, will be zero, and then the next one you add would be one. So this this tells us that the uh, the computer's operating system, in this case DB and Wheezy, is what uh, I have Linux CNC installed on here from downloading the uh, ISO from from the uh, web page. Um, this is what it, it names it. So the other uh, way, if you want to find out what resources are uh, the base address, we can do what's called cat. Now cat means concatenate, or in this case it's, it's just going to display the contents of a file. And the file that we want to list is in proc, 
okay and it's called IO ports okay now if I just hit enter here it will spew all kinds of stuff up the screen and we really wouldn't see what we want to see so what we're gonna do is we're gonna say we want to pipe that and this is just the uh, vertical bar above the enter key I'm gonna pipe that contents of this file um, to the program called grep which stands for uh, something regular expressions maybe it's I don't know. I don't know what it is. It's something regular expressions. If somebody knows, you can put it on the screen. And so uh, what grep says is uh, I'm looking for this pattern of, of characters or whatever, right? So the pattern of characters that I'm looking for is pairport, right? And so every instance of pairport that's in the file IO ports will be displayed, okay? Because this is what we told it to do. We take the contents of IO ports, we tell grep to take the contents of that and just give me the lines that have pairport in it. And I hit enter and we see that there are three lines. So we have parallel port 0, that's the first one, remember the enumerated one that we've seen up here, and it has a base address which is the first number listed. Okay, so this is uh, 0378. And then we have parallel port 1 and its base address of 0, I'm sorry, 1100. Now, these numbers, you, uh, if you're not familiar with computer terminology, a lot of numbers are listed in what's called hexadecimal, which means they use numbers 0 through 9 and then uh, A through F, okay? And it's a base 16. So when we write uh, hexadecimal numbers down, we always pre uh, precede them with a 0x, right? So um, the notes that I want to make about this computer for to use with uh, Linux CNC later is that uh, uh, parallel port 0, my first enumerated port, is located at 0x 0378. That's how I'd write it down. And then the other one here, parallel port 1, I would say, well, my second parallel port or pair port 1 is located at 0x 1100. That's how I'd want to make sure I wrote those down and kept track of them. So really that's uh, all it takes to find that information. Now if you've discovered that you've installed uh, your parallel port and you can't find it this way or you notice that the computer does not enumerate the port or you can't find it in IO ports, uh, let me know. Send me an email, post below this video and I'll show you some other commands that you can do a little bit more investigating with. But if you have downloaded the Debian Wheezy ISO um, uh, Linux CNC install from the website as we've done in these tutorials you should have no issues finding uh, this information alright so that's enough of that let's uh, let's go on to the uh, back onto the slides and let's finish this up we've covered a fair amount of territory if you've been following along with the series we've located a computer to use for the Linux CNC controller installed the OS and Linux CNC done updates, stress tested the machine, learned about different I.O. options that are available, and installed an additional parallel port card and discovered its resources. In the next video, I want to discuss stepper motors, what they are, how they operate, and the different types available. In the meantime, if you've added additional parallel ports to your controller, be sure to note down the resources they use, both the base address and the enumerated port number. Like the jitter value that we recorded earlier, we'll need this information to configure things later. As always, thank you for taking the time from your busy life to watch my videos. If the videos I produce help you, please consider liking, subscribing, and sharing. CNC is an exciting and rewarding addition to the home shop, and if you have friends that are thinking of getting into it, please consider sending them my way. Other than that, have a blessed day.